Welcome to this week's Hymn of the Week. This week we have ELW 303, Brightest and Best of the Stars. I want to uh, thank my son, Kieran, who's filming today. Thank you, Kieran. And we're going to start by talking about the text. We have Reginald Haber, who uh, wrote the text. He eventually became, or was, Anglican Bishop of Calcutta. And that was in 1823. In 1811, this text, Brightest and Best of the Stars of the Morning, was published in the Christian Observer. And as uh, after this text was published, of course, in 1823, Reginald Haber became bishop. And then he worked on this collection, which this text eventually became part of, which was titled, Hymns Written and Adapted to the Weekly Church Service of the Year. Now what's interesting here is in 1827, as you can see it was after um, Reginald Haber uh, lived on earth, his uh, widow, Amelia Shipley, saw this into print. This is downloadable online. I would encourage reading it. I'm probably going to take up the challenge of reading some of it. There's a hymn for each week of the Christian year and even some times, like in a time of sickness, there's a hymn there too. So you're welcome to download that. I believe it can be found on archive.org. But it's a lovely collection of hymns. Not all of them are by Reginald Haber, but most of them. Uh, the music is by James P. Harding. And this was first a choral anthem and was published in 1892 for the Gifford Hall Mission in London. And this 1892 Episcopal hymnal, as we also see in the 1982 Episcopal hymnal today, has a true gift to all musicians. Uh, and to all those that enjoy music as well, is the harmonizations are just exquisite. And we hear this in this arrangement too. So what I'd like to do is take a, let's take just a principal stop and just to play through these wonderful, beautiful chords. So that's one spot. Then in the last line, we have this lovely progression. Certainly, this is very light. Definitely, you can see that it's a choral anthem. So I'll be doing a little text painting in this one, uh, piece again. And textually, it's interesting because it has uh, an outer verse and the, the outer verses, so one and five, are exactly the same. So the text ends at four, and then that refrain comes back, almost like an antiphon uh, when we're reading the psalms or singing the psalms. So in verse 5, when it comes back again, I'd like to bring out some of the brightness of the stars. So what I'm going to do is do a counterpoint. Uh, we'll just use this registration. A counterpoint with a pedal point. And so on. So you'll hear that at verse 5. So here is brightest and best of the stars.
There's such a beautiful harmonization in this hymn that it's just really hard to even add something to it because Harding did such, James P. Harding did such a good job of not just keeping it interesting, but having a trajectory. So it also had a contour and a place of where it was going. And so that makes it such a beautiful tune, uh, even uh, for the actually the entire season of Epiphany. And it's great how he reflects back to the incense, uh, the myrrh, the gold, the gifts that were brought to Jesus. Uh, thank you very much for listening to Hymn of the Week.